Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers. On the broadcast today, we go to the Bellagio and the private office of former United States Senator Harry Reid for part one of our interview with him for the whole show on an all new Nevada Newsmakers. We opened our first shoot back in 1919, and it's been a wild ride ever since. Come celebrate 100 years of the Reno Rodeo. damn deal. Retail's impact on Nevada's economy? Enormous. 8,600 businesses, large and small, employing 145,000 workers. And last fiscal year, retail paid tax on nearly $60 billion in sales. We're the Retail Association of Nevada. We support retail. We help it grow. And we mean business. R-A-N nv.org pro group management offers workers comp services to a growing number of industries as businesses grow and change with the times the need for a solid workers comp program must be flexible and up to date the evolving nature of regulations can make staying ahead of complex tasks challenging but pro group management simplifies the work so your industry can move forward and succeed pro group management Workers Comp that works for you. Truck drivers are some of the hardest working people you'll meet, delivering over 70% of America's freight and 92% of Nevada's. When there's a natural disaster, they're delivering critical supplies to help those communities recover and rebuild. Every sector of the economy and our nation's military rely on truck drivers. So let's take a moment to say thank you. On the open road or city streets, our truck drivers are rolling to make our economy and our nation stronger. Trucking moves America forward. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no-holds-barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we are delighted to be with Senator Harry Reid, United States Senator from Nevada, and one of my favorite guests of all time to interview. Mm -hmm. We're here at your offices at the Bellagio. Thank you so much for making the time for me. My pleasure. Um, let's start out with a, um, a speech you made to the Las Vegas Metro Chamber when you were still in the United States Senate. They were fly-in, and the first thing you said was the most important mission for the Las Vegas Chamber was to ensure that they got the water from eastern Nevada because it was more important to have the water from eastern Nevada flushing the toilets and the casinos on the Strip than it was watering alfalfa in eastern Nevada. Yeah, the reason I came to that conclusion, I came back to dedicate the Great Basin National Park and I was to fly into Salt Lake and drive over, but the weather was bad. So I said, I haven't driven up there in a long time, let's drive. So we drove up there. And uh, as I said, I hadn't driven up there in a long time. And about Alamo, as you drive up those hundreds of miles, you see all these ranches, green, beautiful ranches. And I checked, and um, in fact, one of the ranches is in uh, uh, Baker, Nevada, where most of the water comes from Nevada, but he grows most of his stuff in, Cal in Utah. And I thought, There's not an, that's not very good. And that's where I came to the conclusion. They're pumping that water out of the ground, and I think that there's much better use for that. Uh, and that would be to bring the water down here. We have, uh, they're, they're just opening a, a new hotel in about a year here in Las Vegas. It takes a year and a half, two years to build it. They're gonna have 5,000 employees, 5,000 employees, permanent employees. And when they're constructing that facility, uh, they'll have about 10,000 people working there. So I think the, the economics of it are pretty clear. Uh, the ranchers, very few people. I remember I was doing a wilderness tour and I was in uh, Elko County and uh, met some people there that they had private land and grazing land of hundreds of thousands of acres. I said, how many people do you employ? Five. 
so, so some of the arguments against. Um, first of all, uh, people say, uh, well, for, first of all, let's start with Governor Sislak is against this. Um, what would your advice be to Governor Sislak in terms of changing his mind about importing the water? Well, I think he's been a very good governor. And to be honest with you, I haven't talked to him about that. I'll do that and, and maybe uh, I'll better understand his position and he'll better understand mine. There's a lot of talk about uh, desalination um, off the coast of either California or Mexico that then California would reduce their usage of the Colorado River. And my thought is, and I'm curious to get your opinion, is that it took you 30 years to get the Truckee River Operating Agreement done for the Truckee River, a small river in northern Nevada, to get all those states on the Colorado River to agree, uh, including California. How many lifetimes would that take? Well, desalinization is a good idea, but that stops about there. You have countries. Uh, the wealth of Saudi Arabia, it is just extremely hard to do. Um, to desalinize is expensive and really doesn't bear a lot of fruit. And so I've worked on this. I first uh, committee I was appointed to back in my Senate days was the Environment Public Works Committee, and we had hearings on desalinization. It is a very difficult thing to do. The technology of desalinization has not changed in many, many decades. It's, uh, it's nothing that is going to work very well. So I think that, uh, I hope that sometime in the future that will happen, but it's not going to happen tomorrow. Um, the other um, argument is, and this was brought up at the legislature, uh, was that the cost of building that pipeline would be so great by the time that it's needed in Las Vegas that the uh, people who live in Las Vegas could not afford to pay their water bills. Do you think that's a valid argument? Well, we've heard that argument for a long time. Uh, Pat Morroy, who has done more for uh, allowing the growth of Las Vegas to continue, she was the water um, queen of Nevada, certainly southern Nevada. And we, all, we heard all those uh, things. But in the process, we did things. We lined canals. We made a deal with Arizona that we can, uh, we're banking water for them. Uh, and when drought comes, we have the water in the ground. It's Arizona's water, we, they can have it back. We've done a lot of things to change that. So uh, we're always improving our ability to use water. Water in the West is the key. You know, there's the old saying go that um, you, uh, Celebrate with, uh, I don't know, what is, it, what is that? God's ago, you. Uh, whiskey is for whiskey drinking, is for drinking water is for fighting. Water is for fighting, that's it. Well, that's what it is, yes. Sorry about that. But it, it, that's true. And each day that goes by, we understand the importance, especially with climate change. Climate change has changed patterns all over the world, but even in Nevada, uh, we have um, different waterfall than we've had in the past. It simply does not, uh, we can't depend on what it used to be. Uh, you know, I'm from Searchlight. Searchlight gets twice as much rain as Las Vegas. And um, we've, I've seen, I recognize it more in Searchlight than here. But it just, we used to get violent, what we called cloud bursts in Searchlight. I wouldn't get them anymore, it's different. Let's change topics to a story that uh, the New York Times ran recently um, about UFOs. And you requested funding uh, to research UFOs in 2007, um, according to the article. And, uh, and that funding was cut in 2012, uh, uh, and the Navy still does some investigations. Uh, but my first question is, do you believe in UFOs? Well, let's uh, understand what we, what we, what the topic is. Unidentified flying objects. Um, what I, when I was contacted by the New York Times, they said, we want to do a story on uh, UFOs and the money that you got. It was $22 million. And I said, I'm happy to do that story. As long as we're not talking about little green men. If you want to talk about science, I'm all in. And that's how I've looked at this. Uh, 
it is no longer uh, speculation that people see these unidentified flying objects. That's beyond question. Now, it's even become more uh, transparent in recent months. Now, when I started this, uh, we had occurrences, but I wanted to make sure that we were able to do something scientifically. Let's document who sees them, how many of them are real, how many of them are not. And we did that. We, we got a volume of research that was done and I said, put it out to bid and $22, 22 million dollars worth of research. And it was very interesting uh, because it showed that not two people, four people, six people, 20 people, but hundreds and hundreds of people have seen these things, sometimes all at the same time. We've had some of our military installations um, in South Dakota, up that way, uh, our missile defense system where the, they've come out, there they are up there, the people at the base. And since then, uh, in recent months, we've had pilots who are, they were originally, Sam, they were afraid to tell their superiors, hey, I was out there and I saw this, uh, because they afraid it would hurt their promotions, which it would have done. Uh, but now, pilots have said, now they have an obligation to start reporting them. And the reason for that is some of the work that we did. And it's been good, because they now have better uh, technologically, they can do better pictures of what they see. So I, I you know, I don't know um, what all these things are, but I do believe that we should take a look at them. Because as I've said before, you know that China's doing it. We know that Russia, which is led by uh, someone who was head of the KGB, you know they're doing it. And so we better take a look at it too, because with what the pilots have said, um, the vehicles that they see, uh, they, we do not have any type of ability to do what they do. You know, we have jet airplanes that go 750 miles an hour. Uh, these things, they estimate they go as much as 3,000 miles an hour. So, uh, I'm, I'm just, um, I think it's something we need to look at, and I'll just quickly say this. The getting the $22 million was so easy. Here's why. I was the leader. Uh, most of the defense spending in our country was done, led by two people, in a way, from uh, Hawaii and Stevens from Alaska. I went to them, met with two of them in a classified setting, and I told them what I wanted. Just like that, Ted Stevens said, I wanted to look at this since I was in the Army Air Corps. He said, I had an airplane, I was flying an airplane, and there was a vehicle that was right with me. I could not get rid of it. I would go up, down, sideways, or whatever. He went down to the ground, and what was that up there? And they saw nothing. So that was easy. Uh, that took me maybe 10 minutes to get that money, and it's, um, I'm, glad, I'm glad I did it. Um, you have a relationship with Robert Bigelow, correct, of Bigelow Airspace? Oh, yes, I've known him for quite a long time. And he yes. is a, a huge believer in UFOs. He was on 60 Minutes within the last year uh, talking about this. Have you had discussions with him about this? Oh, of course. Bob Bigelow was a, a very successful businessman, uh, and he is someone that believes in space, and he spent hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars of his own money. Uh, he has now an expandable uh, it, space station. You right, take his thing up there and expands. Right. And so he's, he's involved in this, not through the government. He's doing it himself. So sure, I know Bob very well. Um, let's change topics again. I've got so many things to ask you about, so um, I want to jump in. Um, High-speed rail. Um, it looks like it's at least another two years away for Nevada. This is something you worked on very hard to get this between Las Vegas and Victorville. And it's something that, you know, uh, Tony Marnell has made it very clear this would be very successful. Well, Tony has uh, put a lot of his money where his mouth is. He's, he spent lots and lots of his own money. And I was very disappointed that we couldn't get this done. President Obama didn't, and his people didn't want this done unless it was done 
with American technology, American vehicles. Well, there was n we, nobody was doing it. We couldn't. If that were the uh, rule we had, then we couldn't do it. And that was unfortunate, in my opinion. I think it's something that would have been terrific. We had the federal government had guaranteed a loan of up to five billion dollars. So, uh, high-speed rail. One of the things we're lacking in America, our airports are clogged. Our highways are clogged. We have a huge infrastructure deficit. High-speed rail, every other country, my, one of my boys uh, recently returned from London. They traveled all over Europe on trains, right. and they loved it. They loved it. Didn't have to drive. It's safe. It was fast. Uh, trains were on time. And we have, the best we have is Amtrak which is antiquated, old. You get a train that can go 70 miles an hour, that's a big deal. Uh, most of the time they don't go that fast. So right. I, I just think it's something that's long overdue. And I've talked to Jerry Brown about this many times. And I admired what he started in California. They're way ahead of us. Um, but it seems like that project is pretty much dead in the water oh, now no, as well. No, no, you don't no, think so? No. Trump took some money away from them, but they're, they have California, you know, California is not, uh, uh, they're the fifth largest economy in the world, and they're, they've got money of their own. Trump took back some of their money. Right, but I mean, it, instead of San Francisco to Los Angeles, I mean, they're trying to get it through a Central Valley at this point. Well, I know, but uh, that's why people who said, well, that's such a lousy deal, only going to Victorville, only going to Victorville, that's good, because we had the right-of-way purchase to go to Palm Desert, and it would have hooked under the California system. So, no, I think that... Uh, California is doing well. I, I wish that the president had taken away that money from them. And we have a company now that purchased the, the, the uh, train from, or the, the system from Tony Marnell's group, um, but they were looking for abatements, tax abatements of the legislature, and that was turned down, and so it's gonna be well, at least I, two I, years. Sam, I don't think that tax abatements the state. Uh, the state doesn't have enough money. Uh, you have not enough abatements you can make. Uh, it's, they need a lot more than that. I think that the, uh, there's money already there. The money that I talked about that we had obtained from, for Tony Marnell was money that was not new taxes. That was money that was there. And the money is there. Just have to do it in the right way. All right, let's take a break. More with Senator Reed when we come back. Tamarack Junction is South Reno's hotspot with over 450 of the latest slots and video games. Sully Sports Bar, the Dining Car Restaurant, William Hill Sportsbook, and the Tamarack Steakhouse and Lounge. We're just north of the Summit Mall in South Virginia. Yeah. Ah. Ah. Hey, Dad? Why are you learning? This place is great. Huh? You gotta try this. This stuff is great. People are gonna love it. Yes. Yes, they were. Hi, I'm Eric Robnett, owner of Home Energy Experts. Has this ever happened to you? Honey, did you remember to turn down the thermostat? <sighs> Forgetting to set the temperature? Not fun. We can help. Our new smart thermostat keeps the temperature set for your comfort all by itself. I'm feeling hot now. <sighs> to increase your comfort, go to homeenergyexperts.com for details. That's homeenergyexperts.com. The signs and symptoms of cataracts can start out small with subtle changes in your vision. So don't wait. Be proactive and take your vision into your own hands. If you're experiencing the onset of cataracts or just have questions, contact your eye care professional or call Eye Care Associates of Nevada today. Dr. Hiss has years of experience specializing in the surgical correction of eye disorders and has completed over 84,000 vision correcting procedures. At Eye Care Associates of Nevada, we'll change the way you look at the world. The Tamarack Junction Steakhouse is known for signature steaks, handcrafted cocktails, and world-class wines. Join us Thursdays and Friday nights from 4.30 to 6.30 in the Steakhouse Lounge for live music, gourmet plates, and well-priced wines just north of the Summit Mall on South Virginia. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, continuing our conversation with former United States Senator Harry Reid, and we're thrilled to be here. Um, such a large field of de Democratic presidential candidates when you ran against Sharon Angle, she came out 
of a large group of Republican candidates. Um, and Trump did too, coming out of a large group of Republican candidates. Does it concern you that you could end up with a Marianne Williamson as the Democratic candidate because you have such a large field of Democrats? And I know you don't want to pick a, a favorite well, at this I, point. I think that uh, it shows the strength of our country, not the weakness. We have 23 people wanting to be president. Look at them, they're all quality. You, you mentioned Williamson. You ever watched her? She is really good. So no one, not many people know who she is, but there is a lot of talent in that group of people. And I think, I'm, I'm, I'm anxiously awaiting the debates. I think that they can mean a great deal to our country, and certainly the individual candidates mean a lot. Um, I don't want to use the word pandering, but uh, uh, several of the top Democratic candidates in the last week or so were talking to specific communities and groups and talking about what they could do for them. And I was impressed when I heard Cory Booker who said, um, we shouldn't be looking at one community, we should be looking at all of America in terms of the people we want to help. I is that your thought? That well, the people in Nevada should understand that Cory Booker, uh, mom and, and dad lived here, his dad died, but uh, his mom and dad, his mom lives here and she's a wonderful woman. So Cory comes here quite a bit, so he's right. All right, let's take another break and we'll come back okay. with more. Dimitri Prine here for Design Outdoor. Come visit Design Outdoor's store and backyard to see our wide selection of fire pits, barbecues, and pizza ovens, natural stone water features, and fountains, and frost-proof pottery. Our store and backyard are located at 11600 South Virginia, just north of DeMonte Ranch Parkway. Visit designoutdoor.com or call us at 851-9499. can't do it. Stupid, like my mom. We can't do anything at Mommy's because you won't pay child support. Dad said you cheated, and he's not even sure he's my dad. Mommy said you left both of us, so she isn't gonna let me see you. I look just like my father. I'm divorce attorney Marilyn York, and I may represent men, but hate has no gender, only casualties. Please, stop sacrificing your children in your war against your ex. Hi, I'm Dave Newman. Remember me? I used to be the house detective, and now I'm a realtor, full-time at Remax Realty Affiliates. And a lot of people ask me, how's the market? You know what? It's fantastic. If you're even kicking around the idea of buying or selling, give me a call. Let's talk about it. Call me at Remax Realty Affiliates and just ask for the guy who used to be the house detective, Dave Newman. Everyone is talking about opioids, but they're not the only drugs that can be harmful if taken in large quantities or not as prescribed. You also need to be aware of side effects from anxiety drugs, muscle relaxants, sleep aids, and stimulants. Mixing prescription drugs with other drugs or alcohol can be dangerous. If you take Ambien with a glass of wine, it may be enough to stop you from breathing. Prescribed drugs can be just as dangerous as illegal drugs. Take medications only as directed. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with United States Senator Harry Reid. I can't say former, I'm sorry. I just have to, to give you respect. Um, the, the, the big conversation amongst the Democratic candidates is free college, Medicare for all. Um, it seems to me that those are pipe dreams. That, um, uh, you know, right now, I believe that we have too many people going to college who don't really need to go to college. We're looking at our trades um, in construction, in automobile, y you name it. And these trades are becoming more computerized trades than necessarily what they were in the past, grease monkey type jobs. Um, and Medicare, so many of us spent 40, 45 years working, paying for Medicare. I could see an adjustment to where 55 might be the age where you could start with Medicare. But Medicare for all and, um, and free college seems to me to be a pipe dream. You know about Sam, money. Sam, I think it's such a great idea to talk about that. Why? Not necessarily that we're going to get free college for students or we're going to have Medicare for all. We need to talk about education in America today. And that's an opening to do that. Our education system is failing. Why? Number one, because we place the burden on state and local government to educate. Uh, when I first went to Washington, the federal government did a lot to 
help education in various states. But right now, I repeat, states are doing it on their own. As a result of that, tuition is sky high. You think, uh, I heard your comment there about pe maybe too many people are going to college. I don't believe that. I, th I think that people, we are a better society, the better we're educated. And we have to make it easier for people to go to college. And that's why talking about a free college education, uh, we're not, that's not going to happen tomorrow. But what is going to happen in the near future? We've got to make it so that the federal government makes it easier for states to give students in their state institutions a break. And with Medicare for All, I worked very hard. The most difficult thing I did during my time as the leader of the Senate was uh, Obamacare. It was hard. It was so good for the country. And now uh, my Republican friends have chopped it up. So there's, uh, it's just not like it used to be. We shouldn't be a country that uh, has so much difficulty, people getting decent health care. That's the way, if you have money, you know, I do pretty well. I've been sick, uh, but I, I have some money. And, uh, you know, I can, if a prescription costs a little extra, I got one the other day with 600 bucks. I could write out a check for that. Mo most people can't, quite frankly. That is bad. Our health care system is broken, and I'm glad we're talking about Medicare for All. We're not going to get Medicare for All, but I hope that's an opening to do a better job on health care. All right, let's take a break. You've been gracious enough to allow us to spend a little bit more time with you, so we'll have part two of this interview after this. A bird's eye captures its surroundings at different heights. At Brian Culp of Photography, we can make your imagination soar over buildings, parks, cityscapes, and beyond. Brian's images tell the story and get the job done. If you need a new perspective to tell your story, contact Brian today. Brian Culpa Photography. Experience the bird's eye view at brianculpaphotography.com. Hey, Dad? Why are you learning? This place is great. Huh? You gotta try this. Wow, this stuff is great. People are gonna love it. Yes. Yes, they were. St. Ives Florist, for every holiday and every special occasion. For romance, custom home design. We have the largest selection of fresh flowers in Northern Nevada. And we also offer a large selection of unique gift items. Come see me, Lori Ann, at St. Ives Florist, 700 South Wells Avenue, or call me at 333-9190. Our thanks to the Las Vegas Metro Chamber for hosting us, and always you can catch all of our shows at NevadaNewsMakers.com and on YouTube. We'll see you on the next broadcast. <laughs>